Okay. Tavin is shaking at the thought of doing this. Um. Uh, Tavin is gonna back up from the hole. No, like stop. He's gonna get a running start because there's nowhere else, nothing else to do. Yeah, same. I'm, but I'm not. I'm just like, and... hold on, hold on. <laughs> Run and jump. Aim towards them. No, I'm not doing that. I'm aiming. Towards I am. Them. Okay. Right, so she's aiming towards them. So you're going towards those two. And yeah, I'm gonna try and Tavin, you're going to watch. collision back towards um, the the opening. Yes, you prepare yourself while Carrigan is kind of just to the side, still talking to you, um, try to find out what you're doing, and you just blow past and just take a leap. As you take that leap you quickly realize that you have now just willingly put myself yes, into you untethered have... zero G. Yes, you have just launched yourself into flashback. space. Um, you yep. start having those flashes of being back uh, on that faithful day. You have flashes of your more recent dream that you went through. Um, there's just flashes of different things that just appear and then disappear. And then your f fear and panic begins to morph into worry as the opposite wall and floor are now coming to you with zero ability to slow yourself down will immediately begin sprinting towards where the ship would be. I'm not looking you... back to see what Kerrigan's doing. I'm going after the Son ship. Son of a bitch! <laughs> okay. I'm going after the ship to save people! <laughs> As you in your head do the calculations, out the corner of your eye you do see Tavin steam oh, past yeah. you and launch and almost the opposite direction you with the knowledge that you have just take your run and leap in the direction of joshua and uh, andrea as the momentum of carrigan kind of alters your projection slightly this cable and parts of the ship that's kind of just been bent out with this um the three of you do begin to kind of go towards that andrea and carrigan you both are able to slam into this uh girder and grab on with iron light grip um kind of stopping yourself from continuing into space Joshua, however, you also slam into this girder, and as you try and grab on, the bounce and movement kind of just lifts you just ever so slightly out of arm's reach as mm -hmm. you can't grab on and slip past. Um, continuing your momentum. I try and catch him. As <laughs> you bounce off Joshua, Andrea puts out an arm to try and grab on, but your momentum, same again, it's within millimeters as you continue on. Beyond Andrea. Yay! Twins! This game really wants one of us to die out here. Yeah. Um, it's a, a similar <laughs> Kerrigan. You see Joshua bounce. Andrea reaches out to try and grab him. It slips by. You 
exert yourself to try and grab onto anything that is is there. But again, just out of hand's reach as his momentum continues him on into space. Or or if wits is better, if wits <laughs> is better, so could we do an agility me? Uh let just listen to this bullshit I'm gonna drop on you. And if you say yeah, no to it, that's fine. fine. That. Um so me, agility, grab on to uh Andrea because we used to be partners yeah. and be like human chain and her wits because she knows what I'm doing because we used to be partners. Yeah. <laughs> if it's not, I understand. <laughs> I will I will see with the way that it's going. The agility would be in the kind of like the the speed to kind of go, this is what we're doing. So with okay. it, I will say that I will allow that just on the basis of your aspect isn't necessarily grabbing on. It's more effectively assisted throwing <laughs> of Andrea towards Joshua. And then and just Andrea just... is doing the... <laughs> I'm still holding on to her. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're holding on to the god there, then you're holding on to her. You're lassoing her towards Joshua um, while still holding. No successes. <laughs> I had three successes, it. though. Yeah. I'll push it. And a panic. Okay. I got one success. Okay. So I will, I will give it where you are able to grab on to uh, Joshua. Joshua, you do not have to <laughs> Iron Man. Okay, um, I am going to I'm going to look at Andrea and Kerrigan and be like, I'm going to go tell Tevin that we're back on the ship so he can like not try and do the scoop because we're back on the ship. Oh right, yeah. then you might think that we would we like flew up into space and then he would leave to go find no, us. No, 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 yeah, exactly. He he's expecting us to be floating and pick us up. So I'm gonna go tell him we're good. You two, if you're gonna search, uh, I would be on your guard because there was something moving in the walls right before the explosion happened. Should we? Oh, should we escort you to to the ship? Would you like? That? Oh hell no! I I got plenty of guns. I'm fine. Okay. I'm telling you two that there's something in the walls that caused that explosion. I'm going to get to Tavin to tell him, hey, we're good. If you two are going to search, then once Tavin secures the ship, we can meet back up with you so we can find what the hell we're looking for on this damn station. Okay. I hate this place. But it's nice. No, it's, it's not. Nice. It blew me out to space. It's not nice. It's mean. And there's something in the goddamn walls. You continue through and you do however find a room and it's the only room that has a nameplate on it and it just says system room going in yeah as you try to go in the door is locked electronically <sighs> there is a pad on the side that is still lit up and running. Um, the yeah. door slides open and as you go in the room is filled with what looks to be server towers and terminals, systems all still functioning. Nothing seems out of place as you continue to look there is some portions of these you know mechanical instruments that show that a slight atmosphere is still being maintained on this ship it's not complete desolate station that you would have imagined it being with the look from the outside but this 
is still very much a somewhat working ship. As you are looking around, you do find a a a, it's a, a communication terminal that when you go onto it, you are it does give you the ability to be able to broadcast a kind of message within the vicinity, almost like a SOS message kind of thing, where you can kind of just send a broadcast out. As you begin that process, something catches your eye and all functionality of you just seems to stop. Um, Carrigan, you see Andrea go onto this terminal and begin kind of inputting stuff and all that, and then she just sort of glances to the side and freezes and just starts uncontrollably shaking, trembling, just there. Okay. Um, can I follow her eye line? Can I be in a place to see what she's looking at? Or um, you can give me an observation roll and get in have a plus two with it because if you're actively Ooh. following her eye line, it's an easier roll for you. Uh, to success. Okay. As you kind of see this and you kind of step, kind of up towards Andrea and kind of look to the the left of uh, this terminal it looks to be like multiple uh, screens like small screens and okay. on one of the screens it looks like a almost like a cargo bay it's like a, a a bigger room and in the the room it just looks like multiple cryopods just in an order spread throughout this cryo bay or cargo okay. bay in the ship tavern this is probably 10 minutes after the initial thing so you have started up martha uh disconnected and made your way to the 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 front of the ship where you no longer have a visual on the the three crew members of your your team um as you look at the radar, it does show that three blips are now within the ship, two of which are together, and one is currently not necessarily far from them on the basis of floors, but it, it, it is not next to the other two, but the three blips are no longer at the front of the ship. I've been just going to very quietly say, God fucking damn it. He's going to sit there for about 30 seconds. <laughs> just like looking out the window, just looking off into the distance. I could just go. God damn it. I mean, my life's just gotten worse since I fucking met these people. I... There's no way I'm staying here at this exact spot, so I will go back to where... Does it look like that one dot by itself might be going to where the ship was docked? You can... 
pertain that it is that it is it's actively making its way to that general location i will start making my way back to redock the ship as you go up to it there is no martha currently docked to the ship okay um Well, shit. Um, let's see. Um, Can you give me an observation room? Yeah, I'm kind of like sitting here going, oh, my lord. Observation. Where are you? Where are you? Where, where are you? Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fail or success. I'm good. Okay. Just stare, just staring at the door like yeah. Well, oh, fuck. Okay. Um. Do I walk back like a pissed off toddler back to Kerrigan and Andrea, or do I wait for Tavin to realize we're not in space anymore and just sit in the chair across the airlock, being like, "Well, you were out late, Mister." I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go head back to Kerrigan and Andrea and tell her, tell them that Tavin is currently docking the ship because he figured out that we are no longer in space. Okay. Um. Yep. You are able to. That would be Brent, that, that is the bullshit. I'm going to go and believe. Okay. As you. Kind of go back out into the corridor and you make your way to the ladder that you originally came down. You do hear something along the corridor. It's like a very light rumbling. Well, I'm going to bring my weapon up and address the rumbling. As soon as I get off the ladder. Okay. Um, so this is still on the first level. This isn't up. So okay. It's only you've just got to the ladder to go up. Um, All right, cool. Well, then I will turn and address the noise. Weapon raised. Okay. Um, as you look, there's nothing there. But the rumbling does seem to be getting quieter as you can imagine it's going away from you. Is it... Is it coming from the exterior of the area, or is it internal, the rumbling? Internal. It sounds as if it's within this corridor. Okay. Okay. Is it... You said it's moving away, correct? Yes, it's getting quieter as... It goes. I'm going to. I'm going to go investigate. I'm going to go track the rumbling because I don't. This isn't the first time we've heard shit on this station. I'm going to figure out what the fuck is in the walls. As you kind of get out of this pulsing light and. You have your flashlight up. You do see what is making this rumbling. Uh -huh. At the other end of this corridor, there is a small figure standing in a doorway. You can't make out any facial features or anything like that because of the distance. They're probably about 20, 30 feet along this corridor. So you can only make out kind of like silhouettes and stuff like that as they're standing in this door frame. But what you can gauge by it 
is that this figure looks like a young girl. And as you stare at this, trying to comprehend why a young child would be on this space station, everything gets a little bit quieter. And this figure begins to take steps towards you. And... Lower, lower the weapon to the side slightly, because I don't want to be pointing at a gun at a kid. I gotta put it at the ready position. Yeah. As this figure gets closer to you, they begin to walk into more of your light from the flashlight. Mm -hmm. And that's when you are able to make out facial features. You know this girl. You recognize this girl. And just as that realization hits, a hand goes on to your shoulder as you turn Aragon and Andrea have made their way down um, on their planned journey as you turn back there's no one there while you're having this conversation you do feel an almighty clunk on the ship Oh, Jim, Having, be back. Just as you were guiding back into dock, you do receive a transmission that they have made it back onto the ship and that they are currently going to investigate and explore as you read yeah, dock. <laughs> I sent him the exact text of the message. Yeah, okay. Well, the exact text that you have received is the exact message you have been handed. And it comes through just as you are about to dock. Safe on station, found Crow Bay going to check it out. This is what I said. Evan <laughs> is just going to let out a really long sigh, dock the ship, and not leave. He's not getting back on that station. Tavin. Yes. As you do a more focused, targeted uh, kind of sweep of life forms, it takes a couple of kind of seconds, and then you get three blips in the airlock bay. Then you get one in the cargo area of the ship. Then another of the of, of this, my ship. No, the space, okay. the station. Um. Then okay. you get another. Then a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. Up until you now have ten blips on your radar of life forms currently on the ship. Do they look like they are lined up like you would see in a cryo cryobods? Yes. Okay. They, I will, uh, I'll go into the communication again. When y'all were in that uh, system room, you sent a message to me. Did any of you happen to check how much power the station actually had and possibly how much it had left? No. I didn't. Well... Depending on the reactor, they might last no. another few years or another few days. No, we're not going to keep them out here for years. Oh, no, I'm just saying if yeah, yeah, there's yeah. enough time for other people to come out here. It's the magic fucking words there. 
ten. Uh, uh, God damn it! I'll. Uh, that was through the microphone. That God damn it! <laughs> I will be there in just a minute. I will get up and I will start making my way towards the airlock. I mean, <laughs> uh, what what is the nearest settlement that we could like? Yeah, that's a. So there's that because there's. I mean, we can't take them out of the cryopods. No, can't really viably move the cryopods. No, either of I, those things would be almost certain death. I mean. Planet Alba isn't too far. Uh, but we can't really go back oh. to Planet Alba. We can't Alba. go back there. <laughs> um, anything we send there could be intercepted, and yeah. Um, anything close? Should have, uh, have to fucking check. Out. Yep. Once I uh, get to the airlock, mm -hmm. I'll cycle it so that I don't depressurize my whole ship yep. and come you out. You don't want to become 3D printed <laughs> biomass? No. Nope. No. Nope. Yeah. And I will, uh, well, let's go to the system room so we can check how much power they got. Tabin. Mm. Um, yes. You search around and you find the terminal that you need. You. Figure out how to kind of get into what it, what it is and that kind of stuff. And you do find out that this, this ship has a lot more power than you would have expected it to. You, the ship would have up to a year worth of reactor like without maintenance and all that kind of stuff the fuel and all that kind of stuff that's in the the, the ship and the reactor it has about a year worth before it would have to be refilled changed any of that kind of stuff but it's while you are doing this something you see forces you to just recoil, freeze. All of you do see Tavin at this terminal immediately just step back in like a deer in the headlights. Um, you see the laptop fall to the ground as he just stares at this uh, terminal. Not moving. I'm gonna see. Gotta look. Tavin, the the thing that you saw was that this terminal has a log system, and this specific terminal was used earlier this day. Well, oh, this is a different well, terminal than what Andrea okay. used. As in hours ago, not a few minutes ago. As in hours ago. Probably, if you were to kind of recount it, probably an hour before you arrived. You all start making your way back to the ladder, down the stairs, and as you make it to the back of the ship as the corridor kind of begins to loop around to the other side you do come across um, these kind of bigger double doors that enter into the uh, cryo bay as you approach them they are slightly opened probably about half a foot Just a nice little gap. Joshua, you're the first to notice all these cryopods are lined up in like kind of like a professional manner. Like they're all lined up in rows. And each one of them has its own individual spotlight 
shining down on top of them. So in this full cargo bay, the only things illuminated are these cryopods. As you look into them, there are some men, some women. They look just like your average folk that you would have passed by in Novgorod just in the market. They just look like typical people. people. Um, he's go through and each of the pods have like a, almost like a, a rundown screen. Like screen. Chart. Yeah. Yeah. Where it has like um like their their heart rates and all that kind of stuff, their general health health kind of things, and then it has like their names and occupations and stuff like that. So Carrigan, you have seen this before. This is this is effectively in Cryo Bay Cargo Transport. This is like everybody's named, everybody's documented. Um okay. everything is the this isn't typical of somewhere that you would imagine would be criminal. Okay. Like this is this is what legally is supposed to be done through transport. So of, like of people in cryo sleep. Does it like say where they were coming from, where they were going? Type of manifest oh situation? Not on these screens. Okay. But from your experience somewhere in a terminal somewhere it should have all of this if it is done the correct Correctly. way um but at this and point I mean, why... nobody knows if <sighs> if within me but as you are kind of going through them and you're seeing that these people were teachers, chefs, dock workers, um, ship maintenance hands. Like it was, it's just um, random people. Yeah, it's just random people. Weird. Give me, or uh, uh, Andre, uh, all three of you, give me observations. Um, as you're kind of going about kind of getting the information, Joshua, what you notice is these cryopods, the information that you're getting, like through like the health and the, the rates and that kind of stuff. These are artificial life form generated. Each one of these pods show no heart rate, no anything. It's, it's definitely not a good idea to open them because either we're going to kill a person because the stuff is fucked up. You know, like there's there's just too many variables here um, that we are, you know, the four of us are not equipped to deal with. This requires a would it, bigger team. Would it be good to turn them on? Well, so I'm going to start freezing before we leave. Well, what I'm gonna do is I want to make my way back to the cryopod, and I want to active. I want to access the. This is a cryopod or a cryo med pod, Chris. It's a cryopod. Okay, so a cryopod should have a, a bio scanner on it, a, a rudimentary one, because the pod will run a scan to see if there's anything foreign or dangerous before freezing a body so i want to make my way over to a cryopod 
and activate the 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 bioscanner to see if what Tavin had suggested is even possible. Okay. And I'm just going to walk up to one of them at random. As you're, like, kind of waiting for Joshua to do this scan and that kind of stuff, get answers, you're kind of looking at the rest of the pods and you're kind of... From your position as yeah. a marshal seeing this kind of thing and the information that you're told it's almost like a duty to you names and occupations yeah. correct authorities are notified correct people are notified of what's went on yes. families can be told stuff like yes. that yeah. as you and Andrea still tethered are going through this and you're taking down the names you notice one that okay. takes you a little by surprise because it's an unusual name it's a name that you haven't heard up until recently and when you look back to Joshua, you make the connection as in one of the pods is a woman and the name is Dutton Rebecca Sweet. Ah, uh, put his my hand on his on his shoulder. I'd be like, uh, hey, uh, I, I gotta talk to you for a second. Uh, okay, the scan should be done in a minute. Okay. Um, you said you were married? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Um, I'm gonna ask you a question. Don't just yell fuck you at me. What was your wife's name? Uh, it would be, uh, well, I called her Bex, but her legal name was Dutton Rebecca Sweet. Uh, did you guys get divorced or were you a widower? No, we're. Still married, just not together. Hey, okay. Um, Josh, you might want to sit down. All right. Again, this vagary is not helping. One of the cryopods is uh, registered with the name. Rebecca Sweet. No. Mm. I don't no, know the last time that you talked to her, I I don't know. I mean, it's shifty at best. Like we don't know what's up with these. Maybe it's falsified. I don't know. Um, but I I, I gotta let you know, man, because it is what it says. Um, when's the last which, time you spoke to her? Kerrigan, which pod? Well, take him over to the pod. I'm gonna look in. Yeah, um, as Kerrigan leads you to the pod, you look in and you do in fact recognize the body that's in the cryopod.
Yeah, yeah, that's. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw something at you. Uh huh. Uh, we don't know what's up with these pods. I don't think it's a good idea to open them. What do you want to do? Do you want to leave her here? Do you want to try and move her? What do you want to do? As Tavin has his hand on your shoulder and you have this presence of someone's there, the screen does flash up that it's completed the, the scan and it does issue a response that there is a mass within. Look over at heaven and be like, you're right. There's something inside some of these. Tavin, as you are switching on these scans for the bio kind of scan, you notice something in one of the pods and you look and suddenly this fear engulfs you as you immediately go into this flight mode you you recoil and almost so 13 or higher so never mind never mind almost fall to the ground as you kind of scarper back you probably move a good 20 feet until you're stopped by a wall. Carrigan, Andrea, Joshua, you all see this as Tavin just loses it. It's just this. The sounds that are emitted from Tavin and this just horror and terror as he just scrambles away uh, making it right across almost the entire room until he gets to a wall Tavin as you are up against this wall seated almost try like still trying to like go backwards like with your feet and your hands just sliding on this floor as you're trying to still recoil the only image that is in your mind is in the cryopod next to the head of this person was this small yellow creature just lying there not moving 